Yeah, I mean, where, where it's headed, I don't know. I remain uh, just a music maker, and so it would be uh, much more than I would be able to or willing to take on to try to decipher and figure out where the music is going or, you know, I mean, I'm still trying to figure out where it came from. So I don't know, I don't know where it's going, but I just want to continue to make music. I am concerned of those things and I am actively involved, uh, you know, with the Recording Academy. I'm a trustee for the LA chapter and, and uh, one of our big things is advocacy. And so we're really looking at the laws and trying to rewrite the laws with Congress and trying to, because they're antiquated. I mean, and as we look at contracts and recording contracts, all of that's, it, it's so, uh, even the union, the union scales and union payments and money for downloads and, and ringtones, you know, it's no formula, who knew? And so we didn't catch the curve as it was turning. We kind of just thought, okay, well, we'll put on auto and we'll go down Route 66 and get our kicks right on down, you know. But it didn't happen that way. All, all of a sudden, it, it made a right and then went up the hill and around the, you know. So now we're, we're trying to, ch we're behind eight ball and we're trying to chase it. But I, I, I think that uh, the music makers of tomorrow, hopefully, are looking at this and saying, okay, because as we know, the younger generation are uh, a little more uh, computer savvy and they, they, they understand that, that whole language. And when you talk about uh, the money being made with video games, and, and full orchestras, you know, performing on those things. So there's work being done and people are, are working, making music, but the music makers have to think outside the box. And I think uh, as young musicians, as young bass players, um, we can't look at ourselves as one dimensional. And the, the minute you do that, you're setting yourself up for, you know, um, you set yourself up for, for knowing that what you do and you've perfected this skill as a bass player um, and, and in a particular genre and it's not that what you do is not good anymore it's just they're not buying what you're selling so what you're selling is good just no one's buying it so therefore it the value goes down it's still good but no value so if you decide that I'm, I'm going to be a bass player for hire, then you are now saying that I am willing to sit at home and wait until my phone rings and hope that it's a job that will enable me to keep my lights on and to feed my family, etc. So, you know, when you look at the business, because it's music business, not music friends, you have a lot of friends, and that's good. And keep your friends uh, uh, at a nice distance. Uh, because when it's time to work, it's time to work. So organize yourself in, with a schedule that will allow you to be productive and be proactive in your career. Um, let's just say uh, you're a bass player, but you're, you're learning Pro Tools, you're learning uh, engineering, and there are a lot of, lot of other things that you can do along with your playing that will allow you to, you're a writer, you're a songwriter, um, you're uh, an artist, you're, you do uh, painting. As we know with, with Miles Davis and Joni Mitchell and uh, uh, Tony Bennett, you know, have, all have a different style artistic, and I would encourage anyone in any instrument, especially bass, but in any instrument, to look at all of because that creative side means that there's some other creative things that you love to do that you're probably really good at, and you know, just because you want it's not enough. I mean, great bass player, nice person, maybe it's not for you though. Just because you want it is not enough. So. You have to know that you can still love it and not have to leave it, but you can make uh, a living and make a good living doing other things. Photography, I mean, there's so many other things. So still play. I wish everyone played an instrument or did something creative because that's a side of uh, 
endorphin that's releases in your body and, and it's, it's, it's the tingling on the arms. I mean, you know, and whatever that is. I mean, be it sports or whatever those things are. Um, you know, so, so that's what I think about the young musicians and how they need to, to look at other ways to expand, you know. Um, there are, uh, even when you talk about some of the casual gigs, some other things, but there, you know, everyone wants the fame and the fortune they want, you know, to be on top. But if there was nothing to stand on, no shoulders to stand on, then how would you reach the top? And how would you stay there? You know, would you would you just elevate? And I, I don't know. So looking at our past and understanding the music of, of the past and really studying it, and you want to be a film composer, you know, you want to be a mountain climber, you go to the mountain. You just can't do it, you know, sitting sitting at home and thinking it's just going to happen. That all of a sudden, it's the, the you know, uh, there's going to be a knock on the door, and guess what? There's opportunity looking for me. Hey, here I am in here. I just I've been waiting. You know, it's not it's not going to just come in and knock. So you have to go out and and seek the things that you want to learn. The information is there. The 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 mentors that you look for in your life, they're there. You know, they're just waiting for you to come and say, "I want to learn. Can I can I come to your class? Can I sit in on a session, can I, you know, it's the old-fashioned way, you know. It's not good things come to those who wait, it comes to those who work while they wait.